Kuyang became a trending topic on the internet in Indonesia on Wednesday, September 16, 2020. The reason was the circulation of a video showing a white figure, although not clearly visible. However, witnesses who saw it believed that the figure was a Kuyang. What is Kuyang? What is its true story? And what is its connection to Manananggal, Carmila, or even Elizabeth Bathory? Let's find out in today's episode of 7 Female Ghosts of Indonesia, Kuyang, Female Vampiric Figures, and the Price of Eternal Beauty. Chapter 1, Etymology and History in its myth, Koyang is a legendary ghost in Kalimantan or Borneo Island. Usually depicted as a female, the Koyang is said to be able to detach its head from its body and fly along with its organ such as the heart, liver, intestines, and kidneys. When Koyang flies at night, there is often a red light or a small fire accompanying it. Koyang appears as ordinary humans during the day, but when the night comes, they fly around carrying their heads and detach from their body. According to the book Kumpulan Kisah Nyata Hantu di 13 Kota by Argo Wikanjati, the Kuyang is a hybrid of half-human, half-supernatural entity that likes to suck the blood of women who have just given birth, even newborn babies. It has two fangs on both sides of its mouth. Kuyang typically seeks its victims at night and can sometimes transform into a bird or cat to deceive human. According to local belief, the Banjar people describe Kuyang as a long-haired woman who always covers the marks on her neck or wraps her head with scarf while walking at night to avoid people's attention. The Banjar people also believe that the Kuyang is afraid of red onions, especially the single bulb of a red onion. Additionally, the supernatural being is also afraid of mirrors, comms, knives, and jaring angau grass to ward off kuyang disturbances. People often place these items near a newly born babies. In general, the Banja people use iju rope as a swing for the baby, wrapping it tightly to cover the neck area and only revealing the face and the head. The purpose is to prevent and avoid kuyang and other supernatural beings. It is believed that kuyang and supernatural beings fear the iju rope. Therefore, iju is also used used as a wall or protective barrier for houses by tying it around the top of the house. Hence, people in the past used to place rice bran or ijuk on the house's roof. It is said that to kill a kuyang, one must find the part of the body it left behind. Once found, sharp objects should be inserted into the neck joint. This will prevent the kuyang from rejoining its body and ultimately cause it to die. According to another source, Kuyang in Kalimantan possesses a powerful oil called Minyak Kuyang or Langga Kawiang. Minyak Kawiang or Minyak Sumbului in the local language. I'm sorry if I butchered the pronunciation. Allegedly, this oil is the source of Kuyang's power. According to the myth, ordinary humans who come into contact with Minyak Kuyang can transfer into this creature. From another source, it is said that women who transform into Kuyang are typically driven by their desire to stay beautiful, to stay youthful, to be loved by their husbands, became idols to every man, or due to ancestral knowledge passed down through generations. Chapter 2 Let's talk about similar creatures that share resemblance to Kuyang. First, Manananggal. Three years ago, I stumbled upon the story of Manananggal from the Monstrum slash story YouTube channel. My immediate thought at the time was, ah, I didn't know that the Philippines has a similar creature like Kuyang. So, thank you, Monstrum. The Manananggal is a frightening creature often portrayed as female with the ability to detach its upper torso and grow bat-like wings to fly into the night in search of victims. The name Manananggal comes from the word Tagalog Tanggal, which means to remove or to separate referring to its ability to separate itself. It is said to target sleeping pregnant women and feed on the hearts of fetuses or the blood of sleeping individuals. Newlyweds, couples in love, and grooms-to-be left at the altar are also prime targets. The lower torso left behind is vulnerable, and the creature can be killed by sprinkling salt, garlic, or ash on it, preventing the upper torso from rejoining and causing it 
continue to die by sunrise. Pananangga, like vampires, are believed to dislike garlic, salt, and holy water. Just like vampires in Balkan culture, they also avoid daggers, light, vinegar, spices, and the tail of a stingray. It is said that there is a connection between the Manananga and the consumption of balut, a fertilized dog egg. Balut is eaten with vinegar and spices, similar to how spices are used to prevent the Manananga from reuniting to its body. The association serves as a way to dissociate from the act of eating balu from the taboo of consuming the unborn, which is a characteristic of the Manananggal's feeding habit. Chapter 3 Kuyang, Manananggal, Carmilla, and Elizabeth Bathory Pregnancy, Black Magic, and vampiric women. As usual, there will always be differences in detail of each story. However, there will always be a red thread that we can pull from these stories. Women and black magic. Another day, another deal with the devil it seems. In the story of Kuyang and Manananggal, both tales are very specific in telling that this practice is only practiced by female. As they want to possess eternal beauty, these women who transform themselves into a kuyang or manananggal participated in black magic. If we are emphasizing the goal of kuyang in shape-shifting themselves into a kuyang to be inhumanly beautiful, to receive love from their husband, and to gain attention from men, this reminds me of a witchcraft practiced in Indonesia and other Southeast Asian countries called susuk, where locals, in particular women, inserted needle-shaped metallic talismans into their bodies, which is still happening in today's Indonesia. But let's divert our focus back to Kuyang and its vampiric tendencies. The history of Kuyang itself is not very date specific because just like other folklore in Indonesia, it is spread orally from generations to generations. If we are taking another example of its predecessor or its more famous counterpart, uh, Carmilla, I argue it shares a few similarities. But hear me out on this, okay? Okay. Elizabeth Bathory. I apologize if I butchered her name pronunciation, okay? Also known as the Blood Countess, was a noble woman who lived in Hungary during the late 16th and early 17th centuries. She is infamous for her alleged crimes of sadistic torture and murder particularly targeting young girls. Legend has it that Bathory was obsessed with maintaining her youth and beauty. She reportedly believed that bathing in the blood of young virgins would grant her eternal youth. Over time, numerous accusations and stories of her sadistic practices spread, describing extreme acts of torture, including beating, burning, and mutilating her victims. There is a speculation and debate about whether Carmilla, you know, the famous lesbian vampire figure predating Bram Stoker's Dracula, the fictional character created by Joseph Levanu, was inspired by or based on Elizabeth Bathory. It is important to note that there is no concrete evidence linking Carmilla directly to Bathory. However, for the sake of my argument, let's just say that Carmilla and Elizabeth Bathory is connected. And on a serious note, we don't even know and we're not even sure if the crimes that are committed by Elizabeth Bathory are even real in the first place. Some accounts claim she killed hundreds of young girls, while others suggest she was more of a modest figure. And due to her high social status and influential connections, rumors of her crimes were told from her jealous competitors. All top Talk about Carmilla and Elizabeth Battery specifically if you guys want in the I don't know future video uh, especially because I just saw this movie titled uh, Vampire Lovers by Hammer Studio Production a few weeks ago and I'm in my opinion it was pretty good here we go lesbians come on oh, let's go lesbians oh my god lesbians but for now I just want to pull the thread that has been 
hanging and swinging in this imaginary cork board. Well, I'm not saying that the story of Kuyang and Carmilla or Elizabeth Bathory are the same. It's just they share similarities. What makes it different is Kuyang and Manananggal stories are more adjusted to the Southeast Asian's way of life. Instead of taking young girls as a victim to retain their beauty, Kuyang consumed baby's blood or women's postpartum blood discharge. Southeast Asia was and is more traditional in terms of pregnancy and superstition surrounding pregnancies. According to Argo Wikanjati, which this video took most of its information about Kuyang from, the story of Kuyang is most likely to warn the husband to take care of their pregnant wives during and after childbirth. I see this prevalent phenomenon, if I may say, in my country where some, or dare I say, most of the husbands are not very hands-on in in taking care of their wives and children. I guess what I'm trying to say is what if the story of Kuyang exists to villainized women who are taking pride in their looks? What if just like the story of Elizabeth Bathory where her crimes are allegedly made up by people who were afraid of her growing power, Kuyang is villainized because people just want to blame women for another woman's misfortune like miscarriage and other related pregnancies issues. And and what if, just like the book said, Huyang's story is more likely to warn the husbands or the men to take better care of their wives during, after, and even when they're not pregnant, you know? Or what if Kuyang's crime are inherently bad, that she doesn't have any redeeming quality, you know, burn the witch, burn the bee word kind of thing? What do you guys think? Tell me what do you think about this ordeal and my take on Kuyang and other vampiric figures. If you are enjoying this video, comment, like, and subscribe, of course. Please do. Don't be shy. I'll see you guys next time. I'm V from Indami Humble Servant at your service. Bye.